So the data is F naught from the torus cross Rd to 0 plus infinity, a probability density. And the parameter P greater than 0. And you want to solve dt f tx v. dt f plus divergence x v f equal to rho theta capital F to the power P Laplacian V of F plus divergence V of F V minus UF over theta F. And uh, the initial condition is uh, F at time zero is uh, F naught, and I want a distributional solution to this equation. And let me recall that uh, rho of x notation. If f is from the torus cross Rd to R, rho of x is the spatial density, the integral of f of x, v, dv, and the capital F of x, v, is little f of x, v, divided by rho of x, so that for each x, capital F is a probability density, and theta f, is the integral over Rd of V, F of V. If F is from Rd to R, UF is the integral over Rd of V f of v dv, and theta f is 1 over d, the integral over rd of v minus uf square f of v dv. So this equation is uh, this expression and that expression make the equation nonlinear. So when p equal to one, this uh, corresponds to the Maxwellian molecule. And when p equal to two, this corresponds to the hard sphere. Okay, so last time the idea was uh, this evolution is governed by two mechanisms. The first mechanism is uh, the streaming, and the second mechanism is uh, the collision. So the streaming you define f of t x v equal to f is not of x minus t v v and you check easily that uh, this will satisfy 
the derivative of f plus v gradient f equal to zero. And the streaming has the following property. If I define the energy E of F to be the integral on the torus cross RD of F of XV, V square, one half dx dV, then E of Ft is, uh, let me call it T now. E of F tilde is the integral over Td cross Rd, V squared, one half F naught of X minus Tv, V, dV, dx, and uh, if you change variable, y equal to x minus tv, v equal to v, you get that uh, this is ef naught. And so the streaming conserves the total energy. Okay, so now assume that uh, we write this solution for t between zero and h for a short time. And after that, we are going to update the density by applying the collision. So before that, rho tilde of x, so I look at with case t equal to h, and uh, I define rho tilde of x equal to the integral over Rd of f tilde x minus hv. V dv. And I define f tilde of xv to be little f tilde of x of h xv divided by rho tilde of x. And I am going to define u tilde of x to be the integral over rd of v f tilde of xv dv and theta tilde of x is 1 over d the integral over rd of v minus u tilde of x f tilde of xv dv Now, I want to run the collision. Find F1 so F which is which represent F at H XV such that f of h x v minus f tilde of h x v divided by h equal to theta to the power p f 
rho la plasion v of f plus the divergence v of f v minus u f divided by theta f. So if you rewrite, uh, if you make the observation that uh, what is there is uh, f of h, x, v, minus f of, f of 0, h minus x minus h, v, v. And you write the Taylor expansion of this, you get that uh, this is uh, d f over d t h of 0 h minus s v v plus h gradient x f of 0 s minus h v v plus little o of h and uh, so you see that uh, this is uh, the partial derivative of f with respect to time plus uh, the gradient x in a product with v. Okay. So this is the equation we want to solve. And I am going to look for f such that f of h x v has the same spatial density with f tilde. And so, if I substitute that here, I have a rho tilde of x, f of x v minus f tilde of x v divided by h <coughs> equal to rho tilde of x theta p f Laplacian v f plus divergence v, f, you know, v minus u, f, divided by theta, f. I can simplify by rho, tilde, and this is what I get. So the task is Show that one has a solution such that U F tilde is U F and theta F tilde is theta F. So if I have these two conditions satisfied, it will guarantee that uh, the first moment is conserved and uh, the second moment is conserved. OK, so let me comment a little bit more on this. E of f is the integral over td cross rd of v square 1 half f of x v dv. This is 1 half the integral over td cross rd of rho of x 
f of x v v square dv dx dv Now I can write that v square is v minus uf plus uf square. This is v minus uf square plus 2 v minus uf inner product uf plus uf square. Therefore, if I integrate the integral over Rd of v square f of v dv will be the integral over Rd of v multiplied by f, so it will be d theta f plus the integral over Rd of v minus uf f of v dv. But what do I get here? If I use the definition of uh, UF, So that will be the integral over Rd of v, f of v, dv, minus the integral over Rd of uf, f of v, dv, and that will be what? So this is uf. The integral of f is 1, so it will be uf minus uf, which is 0. So I will be left with uf squared, because uf doesn't depend on v. If I integrate this with respect to f, if I multiply by f of v, dv and integrate, I get the same constant. So what we learn from here is uh, this imply that uh, the integral over Rd, Td cross Rd of uh, rho of x, v square, f of xv, dv, equal to the integral over Td cross rho of x, uf of x, square ds, plus the integral over td of uh, d, rho of x, theta f of x, dx. So if I have that, uh, if I take a uh, two different uh, density, which have the same row, which have the same uf, and which have the same theta f, they have the same energy. And so coming back uh, here, rho of x is taken to be rho tilde of x. u tilde of f is u of f, theta tilde of f is theta of f, therefore this will imply that uh, E of F will be E of F tilde.
So what I plan to do is uh, to convince you that uh, this equation plus little o of h, capital O of h, has a solution. So I am going to fix h a time step, step size, small, and then uh, I am going to prove that uh, this equation has a solution. So let, let me comment on that. The equation d of f over dt equal to theta f to the power p Laplace v f plus divergence v f v minus u f divided by theta f. This equation is the discretization. This equation is a discretization of that equation. Now, if I set a v, capital V, or capital W, to be so let us observe that I can rewrite this equation as a divergence of V, theta F to the power P, gradient of log of F with respect to V, F plus F, V minus U F divided by theta F. Indeed, uh, this gradient is the gradient of f divided by f. If I multiply by f, I am left with gradient of f. If I apply the divergence, I get the Laplacian. But uh, every continuity equation can be written dtf plus the divergence of f times velocity equal to Zero. So any probability measure which is, uh, which is of bounded second moment, there exists a vector field V such that uh, this equation is satisfied, and V represents the velocity. Now, if I compare these two things, it is telling me formally that uh, V equal to negative theta F to the power P, the gradient log of f plus v minus u f divided by theta f, it is telling me that uh, this is my velocity. Okay, so this is a constitutive law which characterizes uh, a certain material. This means that uh, if we want to solve uh, this equation, it is equivalent to solving uh, a discrete equation whose velocity will be given by that. If you discretize the velocity, the displacement, you get the velocity. So you take the position You have f at time t equal to 0 and f at time t equal to h. And assume you have a map t which is going, which is moving mass from here to there and call t star. the map which is moving mass from here to there. Then the velocity will be 
the discrete velocity will be v minus so call this w, the point here w, and call the point here v. I'll call it a and b. The discrete velocity will be b minus a divided by h. So I am going to write that uh, this is uh, t star of v, and that is v over h. So if I call t the map going from here to there, my velocity is represented by v minus t star of v over h, the discrete velocity. Or if you want, I can call it uh, v minus t star of b. It means that solving this problem is equivalent to finding a transport map such that the following inequality, the following inequality hold negative theta f to the power p gradient log f plus v minus uf divided by theta f. Okay, so you have two, two options. Um, either try to understand, so what I am trying to do is uh, try to explain that uh, the Wasserstein distance is a very natural way to understand the physics. But what I am going to do on uh, Wednesday I am going to prove mathematically that if I solve this equation, then I have rigorously established this. Okay. And so what I am trying to do is, uh, I am trying to make you feel that it is very natural if I have a, an equation like that. It is very natural to think that uh, it is the discretization of, of that. And you just write some simple integration by part, and you see the connection. But uh, the formal reasoning to connect these two equations is this. So what I am going to do, I am going to solve, I am going to prove that the transport map, which is going to transport, uh, there is this a transport map which is going to transform f naught to a certain fh, and this map satisfy the following property. So you see that this is a system of equation. I want to find a t such that t star is going to transport f to f naught. And second, t star and f are related by this equation. So to make things easy, I am going to remove the, t, the tilde and solve the following problem. Let me start with a constraint manifold. Let theta be a positive number and u be in Rd. So u represents u of x, but since x is fixed, I'm going just to write it u. And let uh, m be the set of f from rd to 0 plus infinity, Borel probability, such that uf equal to u, theta f is theta. Again, everything depends on x in my equation, but I am fixing x, and I am not displaying the dependent in x. I want to solve this equation, which is equivalent to solving that equation. I am going to call this f naught, and I want to find f. So given f naught, 
in M, define the action I of F to be the vast sustained distance square between F naught and F divided by 2H theta to the power P plus the entropy where S of F is the integral of F log F over R. Step one, I want to show that uh, this functional has a unique minimizer in uh, M. Step two, I want to write the Euler Lagrange equation of that minimizer. And uh, I want to discover that the Euler Lagrange equation of the minimizer is uh, this one. So, step one, existence of a minimizer, it turned out that uh, we, we did not uh, realize that uh, that was uh, a difficult problem. We, we thought that it will be, it will not take very long to solve it. But here is the, the problem. This is exactly, this condition means that uh, the distance between F and the Dirac mass at U equal to theta. So you are minimizing a converse functional on a sphere which is of infinite dimension. If you, make a, you take a minimizing sequence, there is a risk that uh, the sequence, the limit of the sequence goes uh, inside the ball, doesn't stay, stay on the boundary. And this is what makes the problem difficult. So I don't plan, I don't plan to show existence of a minimizer here because that will require uh, a lot of energy. What I plan to, sh to show and which I think is more edu educational is once you know you have a minimizer, how do you get the Euler-Lagrange equation? And uh, why is the Euler-Lagrange equation this? So we want to learn how to differentiate functional on uh, such a manifold. Yes. Yes. So, which sense we are going to do to the solution of this equation? I mean, since the, the velocity does not have Lipschitz regularity, so in which sense? I mean, we are going to consider this in Galatasaray sense. Oh, it it Bob will sense? it will be BV. Yes, that will be BV, the velocity, because, because, uh, um, So we have to, to look this in this distribution sense, just in distribution sense. Yes. And then, how I can interpret the solution of this? I mean, the existence will be interpreted like a Philip Bob, the, the convex envelope, if you have a convex envelope, and we are going to look like the Ambrose idea to Vagrajan Regular flow. No, what I am going to do, in fact, I am not going to try to solve an ODE. I will take this equation, and I will show directly that uh, it is that equation by integrating my path. So I, I am not going to try to show existence of a flow and so on. A direct integration by path will give the discrete version of that equation. Step one, assume there exists a unique 
f in m minimizing i in m. Step two. Write the Euler Lagrange equation. For F to discover I would say discover three and I need to correct that plus a little O of H. Okay, so this is what I plan to do today and next time I plan to prove rigorously that uh, this by integration, simple integration by part Taylor, and Taylor expansion, you get that. Okay, so here is the strategy. I need to find, find S goes to Fs in M. Find such a path and uh, if I write I of S, observe that S goes to I F S attains its minimum. at s equal to zero. Hence, provided that the derivative exists, provided that the derivative exists, if I can show that this function is differentiable, I will get this is zero. So the plan is to show that this is equivalent to that. Showing that this equation holds in the distributional sense is uh, you multiply by test function and you want to show that it holds. So each test function will correspond when choosing a path starting at uh, f equal to zero, you need to choose a tangent direction. And uh, choosing a test function, each test function here will correspond to a tangent direction. And uh, uh, all the test function will give me all the tangent direction and so this equation will be equivalent to that. This is uh, what I want to show. Okay, so let me start with uh, a naive curve. T S goes to F S. So I call it naive because I will start with an arbitrary curve without knowing that uh, it lies in this space. And uh, to make things rigorous, I, need, I will have to project uh, the curve on that space to get uh, a curve uh, which is suitable for applying my variational principle. So let us start with a curve without uh, worrying about the fact that it is uh, in this space. So let psi be a vector field or class C infinity from Rd cross Rd. And you can see that I am choosing a test function so that uh, I can write, uh, I can multiply both sides of psi, integrate by part, and have a solution in the sense of distribution. Now set F S to be identity plus S psi push forward F. So what do I mean here? Let me recall what the push forward is. It 
if you compute mu naught of uh, the set of x such that t of x v t of v belong to a this is by definition the push forward of mu naught applied to b so i have a measure b i have a map t and uh, i want to define a new measure on uh, the a target space so by definition i take the pre image of the element of b i apply the measure mu naught to it and i say this is my push forward measure okay so knowing that definition this makes sense and uh, if i set s equal to 0 we see that uh, my starting point is uh, f now let me rewrite uh, what this mean because we'll be using that a lot it means the integral over r of d of uh, l of uh, v l of uh, mu naught dv equal to the integral over r d of uh, l d mu if i set uh, mu to be the push forward of mu naught by t this for every l and if you take a l equal to the characteristic function of b you see that this and that are exactly the same thing so i am going to be using that often so applying that to fs it means that the integral over rd of f of v plus s psi of v l f of v dv equal to the integral over rd of l of w fs of w dw for every l this is what uh, that means So take L of W to be W. If I compute U of Fs, this is the integral over Rd of W, Fs of W, dW. Okay. So if I choose L of W to be W, and I apply this uh, formula, I see that uh, this is uh, the integral over rd of uh, v plus s psi of v f of v dv and so that is uh, uf plus s the integral over rd psi of v f of v dv It value, violates the first, the, first that, uh, the first moment is conserved. So if I want the first moment to be conserved, I am going to impose that the integral over Rd of psi of V, F of V, dV equal to 0. Okay. So I am choosing my test function and psi and I am saying that uh, if I choose them arbitrarily, I don't know that the first moment is uh, preserved. However, if I choose them to satisfy this condition, then the first moment will be preserved. Now, what about the second moment? From now on, I am going to assume that this assumption is imposed. Call this uh, 6. On the 6, if I compute theta fs, this is the integral over rd of v minus u fs square 
f s w of w dw. So choose this to be L and substitute that in this formula. Then what you get is uh, this is the integral over Rd of V plus S psi of V minus Ufs. But Ufs is Uf square F of V dV. And I'm going to expand this. To see that this is actually there is one over d. I need to multiply that by d. This is the integral over rd of v minus u f square f of v dv plus 2s, the integral over rd of uh, V minus UF in a product UF and I can take it will be minus 2 UF in a product V F of V DV no I have a, I have this in the product that, so it will be minus 2s plus 2s, the integral over rd of v minus uf, psi of v, f of v, dv, plus s square, and I will have the integral over rd of uh, psi of v square f of v dv. Okay. Now, let us compute this term. Call it uh, e. e will be the integral over Rd of V minus U psi of V f of V dV because uh, I have chosen f in M and so Uf is U. So I am going to impose that uh, this is 0. We impose that this is 0. So I am choosing psi such that this hold and uh, that hold. On the 6 and 7, we have a theta f s is d theta f plus s square the integral over r d psi of v square f of v dv. So still we don't have equality, but we have an error of order s square. There is no way, unless we choose psi equal to zero, there is no way we can make, a, we can make a fs in m. However, it is almost in m up to an order of s squared. The Euler-Lagrange equation will be a derivative with respect to s. So such a term will not matter. What we did was we took this fs and we projected that on m. And when you make the projection, you get uh, exactly the same map plus a correction 
little o of s. One define define f bar s to be the projection on m of f s. Okay. So how do you project? Take G arbitrary. We want to project G. On M. So define A to be theta G divided by theta the square root. And uh, G bar of V to be A to the power D, G of V minus U times A plus UG. So we learned last time that uh, if you define G bar this way, then we show that G bar belongs to M. And so when you take uh, this Fs, you define the projection this way, and uh, you get uh, something in uh, M. I have it, an explicit representation. One check. With the explicit representation, call this line. The explicit representation. Nine can be used to show that I of uh, Fs minus I of the projection F bar S is uh, little o of S. And so differentiating. Differentiating with respect to S, I, F, S, at uh, S equal to zero, is the same thing as differentiating I of F by S at S equal to zero. And so if I can show that uh, this is differentiable and is zero, I am done. That is what I am going to to do, and wh while I am doing the computation, I will show you that uh, if instead of working with S, you work with S bar, the computation are exactly the same. I'll show you why there is no difference. So final task. D over DS, I of FS at S equal to zero. Okay. So let us start with some notation. Let T and T star, let T from RD to RD be a Borel map. 
such that the Wasserstein distance square between f naught and f is the integral over Rd of W minus T of W square f naught of W dW. And uh, T pushes f naught forward to f. Okay, so this is uh, the existence result in Monge problem. If you have two measures which are absolutely continuous with respect to Lebesgue measure, there is an optimal map which uh, pushes f naught to f. Set t star to be t inverse. So what is t star? We can push f naught to f in an optimal way, which means we can also put f to f naught in an optimal way. The optimal map there will be t star. This is a metric. So the cost to go from n naught to f is the cost to go from f to f naught. And so we must necessarily that have that the inverse of t is invertible, and the inverse of t is the optimal map pushing f to f naught. So we have t star pushes f to f naught, and the Wasserstein distance between f naught and f is the integral over Rd of v minus t star of v square f of v dv. Okay. So here is the picture. F naught goes to F using T. And F goes to Fs using identity plus S phi. Therefore, if I use the composition T composition identity plus Si, if I define this to be LS, by definition, if LS is there, then LS pushes F naught to FS. As a consequence, the distance square between F naught and FS will be less than the integral over Rd of W minus Ls of W square Fs F0 W dW. So the distance between two probability density is obtained by minimizing this total cost over all the transport map. I have found a transport map which is going to push F naught to Fs. Therefore, the minimal cost is less than the cost produced by that transport map. Yes, yes, yes. And so since the small deformation will be diffeomorphism, yes. then, uh, and uh, the large deformation was one-to-one, -one, then the composition will, will be also one-to-one. -one. Yes. 
So let me replace. No, this is, uh, this is wrong. This is what is correct. Right. T goes from F not to F. Identity plus F psi goes from F, F to FS. Therefore, the correct mass going from F not to FS is uh, identity composition plus S psi composition T. And next, I want to recall what this means. This means that the integral of uh, L of uh, T of W, F naught W, DW, is uh, the integral of L of V, F of V, DV, for every L. This is what uh, that uh, identity means. I am going to apply that identity here. And before I do that, let me observe that this is the integral over Rd. Let me write the Ls by what it is. It is identity plus Si composition T square F naught of W dW. And uh, let me write uh, W as uh, T star composition T of W. So T star is the inverse of T. Therefore, T star composition T is uh, the identity map. Now I am going to use this rule to say that uh, this is the integral over Rd of T star of V minus V minus S psi of V square F of V dV. So let me expand what I get. S the distance square between F naught and uh, Fs is less than or equal to. I am going to explain what is there. I will have the integral over Rd of T star of V minus V square F of V dV plus twice S, the integral over Rd of T star of V minus V in a product C of V, F of V, DV, plus S square, the integral over RD of uh, Psi of V square, F of V, DV. And uh, give a name to this, call this 10. Okay, so 10 is obtained by expanding this. But what do I know about this expression? Yes. So I can replace this by W2 square F naught F. And so we see the Taylor expansion of order one. Let me do the same thing with the entropy. So now I want, this was the variation of uh, the distance. Now, the variation of the entropy. The identity plus S psi, this 
pushes F to Fs, and this is a diffeomorphism because I have taken, I have started with I have started with psi smooth of compact support. Therefore, this is a diffeomorphism of class C infinity. And so this equation can be written as F S of V plus S psi of V. The determinant of the gradient, let me give a name to gradient of, let me give a name to this. Let me call it uh, sigma S of V equal to V plus S psi of V. This is equivalent to F S of sigma S of V. Determinant of the gradient of sigma S of V equal to F of V. Which is also equivalent to the integral of L of sigma S of V F of V dV over Rd is the integral over Rd of L of W F S of W dW for every L. Okay. So this equation, when you make the change of variable W equal to sigma S of V, because sigma S is the diffeomorphism, you see that this holding for every L is equivalent to that. Okay. So I am going to exploit both property S S of F S is the integral over R D of uh, the log S F the log F S F S Now take L to be the log of Fs. If I do that and use this formula, what I get is the integral over Rd of the log of Fs of sigma S of V, F of V, dV. So I am losing this formula with an L equal to log of Fs. Now I'm going to use that formula, which is telling me that Ff of sigma can be written in terms of F. So this will be the integral over Rd log of F of V divided by the determinant of the gradient sigma S of V f of v dv. Now I look that I use that log of a over b is log of a minus log of b to get that this is the integral over rd log of f multiplied by f minus f log of determinant gradient sigma s. So we see here the entropy of F appearing, and uh, we can compute this determinant easily. So the gradient, the gradient of sigma S of V is identity plus S, the gradient of uh, C. 
of V. Now, when I apply the determinant, when I perturb the identity and apply the determinant, what do I get? Something plus little o of s. Okay, so let us make uh, the computation in the two D case. So I want uh, one zero zero one plus uh, s a one one a one two a two one a two two. This is one plus s a one one s a one two s a two one one plus s a two two. So if I compute the determinant, I get uh, 1 plus s a 1 1 times 1 plus s a 2 2 minus minus s square a 1 2 a 2 2. So if I expand this, I get 1 plus s a 1 1 plus a 2 2 plus s square, the determinant of A. Okay. I can do the same thing in a higher D. And so what do I get? I'll get 1 plus S or something. The trace, which is the divergence. plus little o of s. Therefore, if I apply the log, the log of the determinant of the gradient of sigma s will be s, the divergence, of sorry, the divergence, plus little o of s. I am going to substitute data here. S S S F S is the first thing is S of F. The second thing is negative the integral over R D F with divergence of psi by S plus little O of S. And again, these are rigorous. My little o of s is uh, something which is uh, of class C inf or class L infinity because uh, it is uh, made of uh, it is made of uh, polynomial depending on uh, the gradient of uh, psi, but the gradient of psi is of class C infinity, and so this computation are rigorous. So if I integrate by part, I have SF plus the integral over RD of gradient of F by S psi plus little o of X. And uh, call this uh, 11. S, F, S equal to that. By definition, I of F is smaller than I of F S bar. Okay. So I took my S, I, I define F S, 
And it was not on the manifold. I projected that on the manifold to get the FS bar. Since FS bar is on the manifold, if I compare it to F, it has a, a bigger action. But this is I of F, S plus little O of S. And in fact, uh, coming back here, I said uh, if I wanted, I work with a projection. So here, if I was working with a projection, I will add a little O of S. If instead of using FS, I use FS bar, I'll have a little O of F of S. When you propagate the little O of F of S here, you get a little O of S. And this is how you prove. This is how you prove this inequality. Now, I am going to use a 10 and use 11. It tells me that this and that. Let me recall what uh, I is. I of F is uh, 1 over 2 H theta P, theta to the power of P, versus 10 distance between F naught, F plus S of F. This is what it is. So if I divide this by that, I will get that it is less than I of F. These two will cancel out with that half, and I will get minus S divided by H theta P. the integral over Rd of T star of V minus V, psi of V, F of V, dV. And uh, I will get uh, plus S, the integral over Rd of gradient F, psi, plus little o of s. So I get a little o of s from here. I'll get a little, this will be a little o of s, and I'll get a little o of s from there. And if I add them, I still have a little o of s. Okay, again, what did I do? IFS is the sum of this with s, plus that. I have an upper bound on this. Here is the upper bound. If I use this expression and that expression, I get a I of F. Now I use the first order expansion term to get this and that. I have a one half here, which is going to simplify with the two that is there. Now, I compare this expression to that expression I can simplify by f. If I simplify by f, i of f, I get that uh, 0. is less than or equal to negative s, s, multiplied by negative 1 over h theta p, the integral over rd, t star of v minus v, psi of v, 
f of v, dv, plus the integral over rd of gradient f. Now I can write it gradient log f by f psi dv plus little o of s over s. This is true for every s which is small. I divide by s positive unless s goes to 0. So this implies that uh, this will be less than or equal to 0, which implies that uh, this thing will be less than or equal to 0. So divide by s greater than 0 and let s go to 0. So if you do that, you get that uh, what is inside here is less than or equal to 0. But that is less than or equal to 0 for every psi which belongs to a vector space. The constraint, we impose a constraint on the first moment of psi and the second moment of psi. But that constraint makes psi an element of the vector space. If a linear function in psi will be less than or equal to 0 for all psi in a vector space, it means that uh, this must be 0. Yes. 0 equal to the integral over rd. I am going to put psi of v in factor. I am going to put f of v in factor dv. And what I have in the middle is t star of v minus v divided by h theta p minus plus the gradient of log of f. dv. Whenever, let us recall the condition on psi, whenever the integral over rd of uh, psi of uh, v, f of v, dv is uh, 0, and the integral over rd of uh, v minus u, psi of v, f of v, dv is 0. Okay? So, that uh, identity is satisfied for every psi belonging to that vector space. But make the following observation. This is telling me that uh, in the L2 norm, psi is orthogonal to, to f. The condition yes, this is telling me that uh, if I use the L2 norm, if I use the L2 norm Rd F, so my measure is F, it is telling me that uh, psi is orthogonal to the constant. And this is telling me that uh, psi is uh, orthogonal to this vector. So the conclusion is, uh, if I take any psi which is orthogonal to the constant and orthogonal to this vector, then it is orthogonal to this specific vector. I can conclude. I can conclude that negative t star of v minus v divided by h theta p plus the gradient log of f 
is a, a linear combination of the constants A plus B in a product V minus U, where there exists A, a vector in Rd, and there exists a B, a real number, such that this equality holds at F almost everywhere. So that is my Euler-Lagrange equation, and I will have to determine A and B. Call this 12. Okay. So this was the hardest part of the proof. Once we get there, we are, we are done. We have our... So you can interpret A and B as Lagrange multiplier. A is the Lagrange multiplier on the constraint that the momentum is... Uh, Prescribe, and B is the Lagrange multiplier on the constraint that the temperature is prescribed. So multiply, just integrate. Integrate both sides of 12. Okay, so before I integrate, let me multiply by F. So it holds almost F almost everywhere, which is equivalent to if we multiply by F, it holds. So integrate both sides. I have a, on the left hand side negative 1 over H theta P. The integral over RD T star of V, F of V, dV. And uh, here I will have. Uh, plus the integral of the gradient of F dV over Rd, because uh, the gradient of log of F is the gradient of F divided by F, and I multiply by that by F, I get the gradient of F. Equal to A, F, is a probability density. So if I integrate A, F, I get A. And now I integrate this to get B, the integral over Rd of V minus U, F of V, dV. I integrate this by part to get that this is 0. I think I am missing something. Negative 1 over h theta to the power p. The integral over rd t star v f of v dv minus the integral over rd of v f of v dv. So I integrate this by part, I get zero. I integrate that. When I integrate this with respect to f, I get uf. But f is on my manifold, and so uf is f, is a u. So I get u here. When I integrate u with respect to a probability density, I get u, and so this is going to disappear. When I integrate this, I get uf, but uf is u. I am going to use. Uh, I am going to use the fact that uh, t star pushes uh, f forward to f naught to have that this is the integral over R d of w, f naught of w, dw. Okay. So I am, I am using the fact that l of t star f is the integral of l. F naught for every L. And I'm choosing L equal to T star. But this is U of F naught. But I started with F naught in M. Therefore, U of F naught is U. 
So I get that this is 0, that is 0. I conclude that, uh, hence, A is uh, the null vector. So we have gotten rid of A. Now we want to compute small v. Multiply both sides. Twelve by v minus u and integrate. Okay, so I will have a negative one over h theta p, the integral over r d of t star of v minus v inner product v minus u, f of v dv, plus the integral over rd of uh, the gradient log of f, inner product v minus u, f of v dv, equal to the integral over rd of b, v minus u, square f of v dv. So I multiply this by v minus u, that by v minus u, this disappear, I multiply this by v minus u. And uh, this integral, we know what it is. So let us recall data f is on the constraint manifold. Hmm? Yes. So this is the temperature. There is a B, a B in front of it. So I take the B outside. I have D. Theta f, but theta f is theta. Call this 13. But I can compute this, the integral over rd of the gradient of log of f. v minus u f dv equal to the integral over rd the gradient of log of f is the gradient of f divided by f. I multiply by f as simplify. So it is the gradient of f, v minus u, dv. I integrate by part <coughs> to get the negative the integral over rd of df, dv. But f is a probability density, and I get a d. Now I need to compute that. Also, if I integrate over Rd T star of V minus V, V minus U, F dV, 
I can split that into two integral. This is the integral over Rd, t star of v minus v in a product with v f dv minus u, the integral over Rd of t star of v minus v f of v dv. But we have already computed the integral of t star of v minus v, f of v dv, and found that it is 0. Because the first integral is the moment of u0, the second is the first moment of u0, the second integral is the first moment of f. So this, we know that it is 0. Now we are going to make this observation. This is the integral over Rd of t star of v in a product v, f of v dv, minus the integral over Rd, 1 half v square, f of v dv, minus 1 half the integral over Rd, v square, f of v dv. Okay, so I have used, I have written that v square is one half of v square plus one half of v square. However, v, f, and u naught, f and f naught belong to m, which means that uh, u f is uh, u, which is u f naught, and uh, theta f is theta, which is uh, theta f naught. So I am writing that uh, the second moment of f naught and the second moment of f are the same. Right? Because v square f, we saw that it is z minus u plus u square f. It is uh, v minus u square f plus 2 v minus u u f plus u square. And so this is theta, that is 0, this is u. Therefore, if you have the same first moment and, uh, and uh, same temperature, then uh, you have that uh, the second moment are the same, because the second moment depends only on the temperature and uh, on the first moment. So I can conclude that uh, this is uh, W, F not W, because this is how I write the second moment. Now, t star pushes f to f naught. This means the integral of L of t star f is the integral of L f naught. So if I take L of w to be w squared over 2 and substitute that here, I notice that this is the integral over Rd of t star of v square f of v dv by using that. So I can rewrite this as uh, the integral over Rd t star v in a product v f of v dv minus one half the integral over Rd v square f of v dv minus one half of this. But that is nothing but negative one half the integral over Rd t star of v minus v square f of v dv. And this is the Wasserstein distance, one half the Wasserstein distance between f naught and f. Now I am going to group 
everything together, call that 15. By 13 to 15. I had that B, D, theta, equal to negative 1 over H theta to the power P. This integral, and that integral is here, negative by negative will be positive. I'll have a 2. And I'll have a vast stand distance square between F naught and F. So I have substituted this by negative one half of the vast stand distance. Now I have computed that and saw that uh, it is negative D minus D. So this tells me that B equal to 1 divided by 2H theta to the power P plus 1. The vast sustained distance square between F naught and F minus 1 over theta. Now, <clears throat> combine that to 12. This together with 12 yields that uh, negative t star of v minus v divided by h theta to the power p plus the gradient of log of f equal to a. a is 0. v minus u by b. And uh, b is 1 over theta plus 1 over 2h theta to the power p plus 1 w square of f naught f. In other words, rewriting, I have a T star of V minus V equal to divided by H theta to the P equal to the gradient of the log of F. I am going to move this on that side, plus U, V minus U divided by theta. And uh, minus v minus u multiply by one divided by two h theta to the power p plus one the Wasserstein distance square between f naught and f. Yes. Is there a D on the after the hands when you divide by D theta <coughs> first term on the right side? Yes, so a, a D is missing. Yes, when I divide, there should be a D here. There should be a D. Okay, so before I finish in three minutes, let me make uh, two observations. I want to convince you that this is uh, 
a capital O of H. And then I want to look at the meaning of this expression. So remark. I of F is less than I of F naught. Because uh, I, because F is uh, the, a minimizer for I, so if I compare I of F to I of anything, I have this inequality. Now, what is I of F? It is W square F not F over H theta P plus S of F. When I replace f by f naught, I am left with s of f naught. So it is telling me that uh, the entropy is decreasing. This is positive. Therefore, the entropy of uh, f is uh, less than the entropy of f naught strictly, unless f equal to f naught. Furthermore, I can conclude that S of F, I can conclude that W square F naught F divided by theta to the power P is less than S of F naught minus S of F by H. Minus F. Okay. So this will be of order H. By that, it is of order H square. Therefore, W square is of order H square. I divide by H, I get something of, of order H. It is not a proof, but we are going to make that rigorous. Second observation. Second remark. Recall that the Maxwellian is 1 divided by 2 pi theta to the power d over 2 exponential of negative v minus u square over 2 theta. And so the log mf is negative t over 2, the log of 2 pi theta, minus v minus u square divided by 2 theta. So if I differentiate the log of mf, I get a negative v minus u over theta. Therefore, coming back to this expression, I see that uh, what is here is uh, negative the gradient of the log of mf. So if I am going to rewrite uh, this equation 15, 16, S sixteen root of T star of V minus V divided by H theta to the power P equal to the gradient of the log of F divided by MF plus capital O. Okay, I'm going to stop here.